this video is a re-upload. I did it sometime in February last year, and it will continue to be a relevant subject as long as women are being unalived and at drastic numbers across the land. And as long as you guys keep allowing these men, for lack of another word, uh, put their hands on these women without intervening in some kind of way. I understand some people are concerned about their safeties because some of these men are really touched in the head. And you don't want to be caught in a situation where your life might be put in jeopardy. But one thing you can do is stop befriending them. Don't go hang out. Don't go to their house to be. Don't go over to their house to drink beers and don't go out to the bar with them. Don't go to their barbecues. Just turn your back on them and let them know this is unacceptable. I'm not going to sit here and hear about you or hear and see you abuse your wife or your girlfriend or your mistress and let you think it's okay because it's not. So that's one of the things you can do. Stop letting these men think it's okay to beat the dog, the wife, the girlfriend, and the children. Hello subscribers and non-subscribers and people just coming in to check out the content. Thank you for your support. I hope you guys are enjoying this lovely winter season as I am. Okay, let's get into this. I want to open this video up. I will be discussing domestic violence with all the, the cases going on, what's going on with Diddy and Cassie and other people and other women coming out. It just made me think about the culture of assaulting women in this country and around the world. I wanted to touch, talk about the cases, some cases you've heard of, some you haven't, about women in relationships with famous men and, you know, the prices they have to pay for his fame. I want to start off by talking about a situation, um, something, that incident that I witnessed as a child Um, happening to my mother um, being attacked or my mother's ex-boyfriend trying to attack her. I was around five or six years old. My mother was sitting on our love seat couch. I don't know how the argument started. My mother's ex-boyfriend was an alcoholic and they lived together. Um, she was, all I, know, all I know is they were in the living room arguing and I might have been in my bedroom somewhere around the house and, you know, being scared and nervous about what's happening or what was happening, I went to sit under my mother. Um, I guess I called myself trying to protect her in whatever way a little five-year-old could. And she had a rolling pin in her hand, using it as a defense weapon against this drunk man. So I sat close, like pinned to her side. She put her arm around me, holding me close. I guess that was her way of trying to protect me because she was probably focused on him not telling me instead of saying hey you know it's, it's okay just go in your room she just wrapped her arms around me and held me close I was scared for my mother I thought that you know when her boyfriend saw me sitting next to her it would just you know de-escalate like the situation and he'd just turn and walk away but he didn't next thing I know he began to advance towards my mother 
she swung the rolling pin back to get some momentum and swing at him. And in doing that, she hit me in my eye. So, you know, it didn't work off. It didn't work the way I envisioned it working. Just me sitting next to her and him chilling. You know, he finally left her alone when he saw, you know, that I was hit. And my mother, you know, took me into the restroom and was tending to my eye. Um, Days or so later, she packed our things. Our father took us to the bus station and we moved across the country to live with um, our, our father's parents for a spell. Years later, when we were older, my mother revealed to us that that night, if she hadn't decided to just pack up and leave, she was planning on taking his life, her ex-boyfriend's life, in his sleep. But what stopped her is thinking about her children. And I believe it was God came through and was like, mm don't do that. Woke her up to reality. And she was like, who's going to take care of my children? So instead of committing a crime of murder, she decided to pack our things, sell some things, and we left. Thankful that she made that choice. I, I truly honor my mother for being that kind of an example for her daughters showing us not to take physical abuse from anyone. If she had stayed and dealt with it, even though she was, you know, defending herself, she would have been trying to defend herself against this guy. It still would have taught us to deal with that nonsense. You know, just fight, you know. Stay. You can stay with him, but just defend yourself well who wants to keep living like that and who wants to keep seeing their their parents go through that or mother going through that another situation i witnessed as a child um this happens this happened to my mother's friend uh we had a little gathering at our home it could have been for adults only or everyone adults and their children uh, my mother's boy my mother's friend boyfriend came he was drunk and he got into an argument with her friend. We were living in a upstairs apartment. He grabbed my mother's friend by the hair, dragged her out the house and down the stairs as she screamed bloody murder. That is terrified me hearing a woman screaming for her life. It's something you will never forget. Thank God he didn't take her life, but he left an everlasting negative effect on me and everyone who witnessed his drunken wrath you men when you do this to these women you don't know how you affect people and to this day even though that happened as i was a child i still remember it like it was yesterday i didn't want to bring up slavery into this equation but i had a discussion with someone that's very dear and near to me and before i could even bring up slavery that I believe is the culprit of all this. Anti-woman hate and violence against women in this country, um, before I can even mention that uh, it's linked to slavery, they came in and said, it's linked to slavery. And I was like, true. The culture of dehumanizing women stems from the vile institution in this country, slavery. And I know some- It's like, oh my God. Can black people just leave the subject of slavery alone? No. Mm -mm. Because when something that vow took place for so many years, literally hundreds of years, you don't think the residue is still here in some kind of way? There are a couple of things that individuals who witnessed during slavery said about slavery. A man by the name of John Wesley said American slavery is the foulest beneath the sun and then the harriet jacob the life of a slave girl she said in her book i can testify from my own experience and observation that slavery is a curse to whites as well as blacks it makes the white fathers cruel and sensual the sons violent and licentious it contaminates the daughters and makes the wives wretched and as for the colored race it needs an abler pen 
their mind to describe the extremity of their sufferings, the depth of their degradation. These men, slave owners, were allowed legally to do whatever they wanted to women call black. So you know when they was doing it to black women, they was doing it to white women and other women as well. That is left in the soil. That is left in the atmosphere. That it, it, it that degradation and hatred. You a man has to have some kind of hatred in his heart to treat women like that. That hatred didn't die. It just multiplied and grew bigger and worse in every generation. That's why we have such a large hatred towards men women in this country is in the soil it went through the bloodline is in each generation white generations that violence is in your blood and then the black people generation that 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 anger and hurt and and despair that came from being treated like that in the black women is in the bloodline the femicide in this country and world is beyond disturbing. In my video about the first black woman police officer in Los Angeles, her name was her name was Georgia Ann Robinson. The police department wanted a re, wanted to recruit a black woman to be a police officer. This was back in the 1800s. They called themselves, I don't know if it was 1800s, late 1800s, 1900s. The video is it's called the uh, first black woman police officer. I'm going to put the thumbnails, I mean, a uh, picture of the thumbnail somewhere up in here. LAPD wanted to hire or recruit a black police officer woman. They called themselves trying to be diverse. And then they wanted a black woman to deal with, you know, black women who were brought in to be charged or arrested or whatever. A National Association of Colored Women's Group encouraged Georgia Ann Robinson into the position. They believe having black female police officers on the force would both protect black women and girls from white male violence and would help combat harmful stereotypes about black women being more sexually active and available. I said that point to, to show examples of what I meant about um, black women being sexually assaulted and abused by enslavers. It just carried on. And this was after slavery when Georgia Ann became the first black woman police officer on um, in LAPD. This was way after slavery and black women were still dealing with being assaulted by white males. It carried on from slavery. I think it just went underground. I think some way, some kind of way it transferred to black men being more violent be, or becoming more violent against black women when at first it was white men. Point proved. I said the violence against women, particularly black women, stems from slavery and case in point, Georgia Ann. Now, I pointed that out just to show you how deep anti-woman sentiment is ingrained in the soil of this country. Now, some can try to deny that it stems from slavery if you want to, but the proof is in the pudding. Pun not intended. Look at history. How long is domestic violence going to be discussed? Until something new comes along, in the meantime, just talking about this doesn't stop the abuse and femicide taking place all day, every day in this country and the world. How long will women be the target of some men's, some man's anger, resentment, and hatred? Men who are married. When you took that vow, you said you would love and protect your wife. When you abuse your wife since you are seen as one in God's eyes, you know when you violate her physically and mentally, you're doing that to yourself as well. You're beating the ish out of yourself. Just so you know, abusers, their lives never end well. As I stated earlier, the talk of Diddy and other men, high profile men, high profile men had me thinking about women in relationships with famous men in all sectors in Hollywood. The prices they've had to pay just to be with with these men, if I can call them men, is it worth it, women? 
Is it worth the degradation, humiliation, and losing your identity and finding out just how, how much this world values you? Men, this is a question to you. You men who see yourself as high value, right? Since your high value is based on your status, what you've achieved and what you have gained in this life. Why hasn't your high value status transferred into your character and mentality when it comes to how you treat women? Your only high value due to your career and money and things that really don't matter. What matters are things money can buy. You can have all the money in the world, but it will never buy you class or good character. Trust. This vid is not focusing on any one individual. I'm pointing out the numerous accounts of alleged assaults and charges made against some famous men past and present. And I will discuss a national case that put domestic violence in the spotlight unlike any other case before or since. Culturally, woman beating was deemed a private matter and one not worth intervening into. Police and medical pra practitioners alike were, were reluctant to intervene into private affairs or what was then deemed matters between a husband and his wife. By all accounts, wife abuse was also an accepted custom and often regarded with humor. This was reflected in an early 1970s ad for Michigan Bowling Alley. The ad said, have some fun, beat your wife tonight. As I said, you see what kind of culture this country has? Who, who in their right mind would have green light that ad? Even if it was in the 70s, who in their right mind green light, green lit that ad? Culture of violence against women in America. Before the 1970s, judges and police officers still saw women beating as a trivial offense. Policemen would tell husbands to calm down and wives to stop annoying them. And cases rarely came to court. Popular culture depicted women beating as a joke. And psychiatrists saw it as a pathology of the underclass or of individual women. In general, the problem was denied or explained away. In the 1970s, feminists documented the widespread incident of wife beating and asserted that it was not just working class husbands who assaulted their wives, but it was all classes of men who assaulted their wife and who still do today. They define wife beating as one extreme in the spectrum of male efforts to dominate women and argue that Sexual assaulting was a crime of violence, not sex. Psychologists argued that battered women needed therapeutic treatment. At the same time, the diagnosis of battered women syndrome could also be used to defend women who had taken the lives of their husbands. Today, women beating is once again seen as a pathology or a tragedy. In the past, domestic violence was often seen as a way husbands could legitimately correct their wives. I wish you would. Raise that hand up to you. ain't got... A man ain't got one time to even, you know, jump like you, you thinking about putting your hands on me. That's it. It's, it's a done deal. Ain't no second chances. Hell, hell no. Because if you jumped and acted like you was going to put your hands on me, it's somewhere in the back of your mind or in your heart. And it's going to happen one day. And that will be the day that you will have your mother crying. For real. And I know that's all I need to say. How can any person sit back and do nothing when a woman is beat like she's a rabid animal? How do you live with yourself? Men who have been around these deranged, alcoholic, drug-induced men who put their hands on these women, their wives, girlfriends, whoever, and not, and you see this and not say anything or do anything. What is wrong with you? I just can't, you know, hearing about these cases and how many men were present and witnessed this. It's like, if you have a wife or a girlfriend or a daughter, auntie, mother, grandmother, and they know that that was you, I hope they look at you very different from now on. 
Like, you set your ass there and you watch this man stomp this woman and beat this woman like she was a nothing. I hope they look at you different. You believe these men are powerful. That's why you cover their deeds, their evil deeds. What makes them so-called powerful are the secrets you keep. Start exposing those secrets and you'll see just how powerful they really aren't. You're the one who make these people powerful. They're not powerful. It's you being quiet and being afraid to tell the truth is what makes them powerful. And I'm ta- I'm not just talking about in regards to domestic violence and famous men putting their hands on their women. I'm talking about in general. Stop holding these secrets. Things that you know is not right. Stop covering them. You cuz you're worse you're as worse as them when you cover these secrets. When you cover their vile secrets. I want to share a dream I had a couple of years ago. It just came out the blue. I wasn't thinking about this person in the least. I hadn't seen a video of hers or listened to her music prior to the dream or anything like that. And the woman that I had to dream about is a very popular, famous black woman entertainer. As I said, the dream came from out of nowhere. When I have dreams like that, I, I call them God dreams. Especially when I have, they happen right before I, I wake up in the morning to start my day here's the dream a group of us women were at a site tearing down pieces of a structure the frame or foundation or skeletal structure was rotten it was falling apart and as i was telling my uh sister this dream the other day saying that i was going to include it in this video when i thought about that the skeletal structure was rotten i just immediately thought about hollywood let me continue We use various tools to pry cement or plaster off the rusted, rotten steel. I was working alone on a tall, decrepit-like structure when a piece came apart and hit me on my head. I wasn't seriously hurt, but a little blood started to trickle down my forehead. The women working around me just stood looking helpless like they didn't know what to do. I was immediately annoyed as I asked them to help me someone wrapped the gauze around my head i don't remember how small or large the wound was but it didn't stop me from doing what i was doing or we were doing i asked a female entertainer to go to the store for me to buy a beverage she left and came back of course she was there i I don't even know if she was working on anything or she she wasn't around me at the time you know i got hit in the head but anyway i asked her to go to the store and buy me a beverage she left and came back looking distraught She was trying to hide how she felt, but I knew something happened to her. I finally pried it out from her. She didn't want to tell me. She really, she was, I don't know if she was ashamed. I don't know what was going on, but it took a lot for me to get it out of her. Why why she left, you know, in good spirits and then came back like, you know, she lost her best friend or something. Or she was ashamed or something. She said she was stupid. She should not have asked for a paper bag. I was floored. I said, you weren't stupid for asking for a paper bag. Who doesn't ask for a bag when they buy something? I couldn't believe she was calling herself stupid for something so trivial, something so minimal. She said when she asked for a bag, the guard punched her in her stomach. I was peeved. I gathered our pipes and tools and everything we had with us working on that, um, at that site. And I, uh... To, I was going to use it as a weapon to go after this woman beater. As we marched to the store, it was me and all the women that was at the site. I heard a voice say, this can cause things to escalate. Are you ready for that? I paused briefly. I was a little nervous after I heard that question. But my mind and my heart was made up. This had to be done. At that point, that bastard and anyone else who condoned his savage, barbaric behavior needed to be taught a serious lesson. I was aiming at him and anyone else that wanted it. He would learn not to ever put his hands on another woman again in life. I can't remember what took place after we marched to the store. I don't remember how the dream ended. But as I said, when I thought about the dream recently, I think it represents how women are treated, period.
in public and behind closed doors and whether they're famous or not and it's saying i believe the dream is saying that women will be the ones most likely to stop the vicious toxic cancerous behavior in this society and worldwide and, I, and you better believe it because you see what the men are doing and some of the men that write the laws that like to get on tv with their thousand dollar suits on and and act like they're high and mighty and righteous the ones who write the law some of them are the ones that are that are putting their hands on their wives as well we already know what's going on in law enforcement i mean every sector in this country i guarantee you there's men who beat their wives and kids. Let's continue. The root of domestic violence. Domestic abuse, also known as intimate partner abuse, describes any situation where a romantic or intimate par partner or spouse uses dominating or violent behavior to exert control over a partner, physically, sexually, or psychologically. Abuse can begin subtly for many people who experience it. This may make abuse, abusive behaviors difficult to discern in some cases, especially during the initial onset of the abuse. What some have to realize is whatever type of man he was before he became famous or rich. If he was a jerk, abuser, liar, cheater, creep, or loser, he's still that same person. The only thing that changed is his tax bracket, and he has more women at his disposal. And women, you know damn well, some of you, if not most, wouldn't even look at these type of men, let alone share their beds and put up with their abuse if they weren't rich or and famous. No, you wouldn't even give them a second thought. Let them come hollering at you on the street walking. Be like, if you don't keep it moving, but just because they got a little money and fame, you gon' you you just throw your dignity away. Women, sometimes you 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 are gonna have to be going accountable. You're gonna be accountable for what you allow these men to do to you. Mm-hmm. Cause nobody can do to you what you don't allow them to do to you. Even if you think you gotta risk your life, hey, you can protect yourself too. I don't know why some of these women in this world think they don't can't defend themselves. Especially if the cops not gonna do anything about it, and you didn't went and reported it and reported it and reported it, and it just seemed like nothing changed. You better, you better wake up and defend yourself and your children, if you have any, and you know what I'm saying. The heroin allegations leveled against Sean Diddy Combs are the latest in a horrendously long list of similar claims against other famous men. In acknowledging Cassie's bravery and coming forward with claims against the rapper, we also remember women who made similar claims against powerful men in the celebrity world. I learned about this guy from Ashley Says So channel. Um, she did. Uh, she depicted this guy um, on one of her vid recent videos. Go check it out. This is, is brutal as hell. But the guy's name is Spade Cooley. Spade. <laughs> Cooley was, in short, Hollywood's king of Western swing. He was also a mean, jealous, paranoid, violent alcoholic. Spade Cooley was still married to his Oki High School sweetheart in 1942 when he, he hired and then took up with a singer named Ella Mae Evans. Mae was about 15 years younger. She sang okay. She was a blonde beauty. Spade took her as his second wife in 1945. Their daughter Melody was born the following year. Shortly before the baby's arrival, Ella caught her husband with another woman. She tried to pack her bags and leave. He threatened to kill her. When she ran away to Texas, he brought her back. The beatings and insane jealousy continued throughout their marriage. After the birth of Cornell Jr. in 1948, the abuse got even worse. Spade moved the family from their mansion on Ventura Boulevard 
into a spacious home on their isolated water wonderland ranch away way out in the Mojave Desert in Eastern Kern County. In 61, Ella Mae was in the hospital suffering from what was diagnosed as extreme strain. Ella Mae told her doctor more than once that she was in fear for, of her husband. Her husband was certain that she was messing around. Spade accused her of affairs with men, women, and his former boss, Roy Rogers. From the hospital, she retained a female attorney to start divorce proceedings. She claimed her husband had beaten her. The abuse was increasing and she feared he would kill her. Spade responded by harassing and beating her more. On Friday, March 17th, he filed for divorce in Bakersfield, citing incompatibility and seeking custody of the, hip, of the kids. In reality, Ella May remained on the ranch virtually a prisoner. Spade had pulled the innards of the phone out of the receiver so she couldn't call out. On March 23rd, he administered a savage beating to LMA and forced her to sign four deeds, transferring all their property from joint ownership to him alone. Sometime at the 6 p.m. on April 3rd, 1961, Spade coolly unleashed a savage attack on his estranged wife in their home. He knocked her to the floor in the living room and beat her in the bedroom, leaving blood splattered on the floor, walls, and his trouser. The man did the most vilest things to, the, to um, this woman, his wife, the mother of his children. As I said, you should check out um, Ashley Says So video, and she goes into far more detail than I, I am. Um, in the middle of the frenzy, their 14-year-old daughter walked into the house and interrupted her dad. And he did some disturbing, vexing things to his wife's body in front of their daughter, thinking that the wife was deceased. He was arrested, had a trial, found guilty of first-degree murder. And this is what I call coddling. Coddling in an assault society. On August 5th, 1968, Spade served nearly nine years. In November of 69, Spade received a 72-hour furlough from the hospital to perform in a benefit concert for the Deputy Sheriff's Association of Alameda County at the Oakland Auditorium. See what I'm talking about? So they, they just overlooked the horrific acts of this man. Like I said, the man did some horrific things to his wife after he acted like he didn't know she was deceased. He did some horrific things to his wife's body in front of their child. And these sheriffs had this guy put on the cusser from him. That's what I'm talking about. Ooh. The audience of 2,800 lawmen and officials cheered him on as he performed. This brutal murderer got cheered on. Um, I guess they just... You know, because of his skills and because he was famous, they just conveniently forgot that he was a murderer. It was like the glory days. When he was done, he took a bow. He walked off stage to a standing ovation. At intermission, the applause still ringing, coolly stepped backstage. He was out of breath. He told an attorney he was suffering chest pains. He told some friends that he felt today is the first day of the rest of his life. So he thought. Then he dropped his fiddle and dropped dead of a heart attack. Spade Cooley was 58, three months away from real freedom. I told you it doesn't end well for women beaters, wife beaters. Years ago, I was told that heart attacks and strokes are signs that God is angry with you. <laughs> now think about, uh, before you want to come in with your little mocking and ridicule, think about all the men that they suddenly had heart attacks. And think about how many of them were wife beaters. You better think. Sugar Ray Leonard filed for divorce in March 1990. In an amended divorce petition, attorneys for Juanita Leonard said the couple separated permanently in December 1989. The petition charges that Sugar Ray Leonard did commit adultery and says his wife has neither forgiven nor condoned said acts. Juanita Leonard's amended petition also alleges that Sugar Ray Leonard has persistently engaged in cruelty of treatment 
and that he assaulted his wife, causing her bodily injury and has harassed and humiliated her in the presence of her family, friends, and others. Why do people like to do that? Why do men, why do people like to humiliate people? In front of you? Let's go. Let's continue. On March the 30th, 1991, the Los Angeles Times broke a story based on divorce court documents that Sugar Ray Leonard admitted to physically abusing his wife, including hitting her with his fists and using cocaine and alcohol over a three-year period while temporarily retired from boxing. In his book, The Big Fight, My Life In and Out of the Ring, which debuted June 6, 2011, Ray says he was victimized sexually by a nameless coach. The 55-year-old retired fighter speaks candidly of his infidelities, drug problems, and sexual abuse. I firmly believe that men who beat their wives and significant, and significant others have major issues with their sexuality. I really do believe it. I don't believe that a man who has no sexual identity issues would treat a woman in such a degrading, disgusting way. Wesley Snipes. Abuse allegations came with quite a shock when Halle Berry confirmed that she had also faced sexual assault as a child and as an adult. She did not mention any particular name of the person, but everyone assumed that it was Wesley Snipes. Barry and Snipes worked on Spike Lee's movie Jungle Fever in 91. Several years later in New York, Barry gave a speech at the Mayor's Fund Benefit. In the speech, Barry admitted how she took the right decision. Barry told, I devalued myself and thought I wasn't worth it. I chose partners that mimicked my father. In an interview with Urban Daily, Barry recall, recalled her worst days. It was only when I was in an abusive relationship and blood squirted on the ceiling of my apartment and I lost 80% of my hearing in my ear that I realized I had to break the cycle. It is still not known whether Wesley Snipes is the real culprit. Halle Berry did not confirm the name and Sniper doesn't seem to get bothered by these allegations. Halle Berry's fans are still outraged today. When you hear about these things that have been confirmed that some of these Hollywood men do, and they still prance around, head up in the air, smiling for the camera like everything is all right in the world, I wonder what kind of hypnosis or drugs are they on for them to present themselves as being unbothered that is known what kind of a true monster they really are. And I see him smiling for the camera, and I just heard this story. And I'm talking about the ones that have been proven, not allegations and rumors. And sometimes those rumors be factual. You know, in the, in the 90s, a lot of these things that are coming out, I heard about them. You know, when you live um, in a town that I live in, a lot of people know a lot of people in the industry, Hollywood. And they were talking about these things then. Will Smith, Jada, P uh, I have an ex-friend who used to go to their parties. And I'm not going to say who he is because we don't talk today. But, you know, the thing he, he told me a lot of things that are being confirmed today. And this was in the 90s. Okay, let's continue. The question that I said about, you know, these men that's been confirmed that they did heinous things to women, brutal things to women, um, that quite and how they able to just come in public and, you know, smile and act like everything is okay, that question leads to the next person. This is tough, so if you can't handle it, turn off the video. The next person I'm discussing is an incident or two incidents that was reported in uh, 2011. Joe Button. In 2011, a woman by the name of Esther. Well, he was arrested. He was arrested. I don't know if he was charged. But in 2011, a woman by the name of Esther Baxter described an incident that took place between she and Button. We got into an argument and he just basically ended up choking me so I couldn't breathe. Sitting on my stomach for half an hour while I was three months pregnant. It was hard for me to even put this in because just that part. Of course he denies it, but just that part. Just thinking of a person, a man sitting on someone's stomach 
who's pregnant you 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 that was murder you murdered that baby Esther went to the hospital where she found out that she lost her her daughter but Joe says that Esther's lying he went on to detail his side of the story saying that he ignored her until she threw his computer on the floor Joe says he hemmed her up but denies ever hitting her not at all he says don't they always say they don't they didn't do nothing can I but the broken fist uh swollen fist blood on a fist a woman crying with blood on her face and they say they didn't do it in 2014, the rapper was accused of viciously beating up his ex-girlfriend in a jealous rage outside of a New York restaurant earlier that week. But he denied those claims. According to the police, the 33-year-old Pump It Up singer forced the 25-year-old woman into his car near the corner of Nagel Avenue and Dickman Street in Queens at around... 4 30 a.m on monday and then smashed her head into the dashboard but then allegedly drove the woman to his home in new jersey where he proceeded to punch and kick her i would have tried to jump up out of that car you weren't gonna drag me to your house and but this happened in 2014 now this is the case that put domestic violence in the spotlight Francine Hughes, the movie The Burning Bed was depicted on her. It was a 1980 movie that starred Farrah Fawcett as an abused wife. One day she got tired of his brutality and took matters into her own hands. The case, as I said, Francine Hughes, the case changed how the United States viewed domestic violence. Around 1964, Francine Hughes married James Mickey Hughes, who became emotionally, verbally, and physically abusive shortly after they were married. It started when she bought some new clothes. Mickey ripped them off. She didn't know why. Soon they had four children. Mickey spent most of their money on alcohol. 71, she went to see a social worker about divorcing him. However, Mickey just ignored the divorce decree and came and went as he pleased, beating her when he came. He was in a serious car accident. She took him in and nursed him back to health. In 77, Francine attempted to enroll in secretarial school. Her mother was paying for it. Mickey forced her to burn her books and demanded she drop out. Francine called the police when he threatened to destroy her vehicle, but the police said they couldn't do anything about it since they didn't witness the abuse. They said this even though Mickey had threatened them and told Francine in front of the police that it was all over since she called for help. As soon as the police left, he beat her, sexually assaulted her, and then fell asleep. That's when she knew what she had to do. Acting quickly, Francine put her kids in the car, poured gasoline all over Mickey and his bed, and lit it on fire. She drove herself to the Ingham County Jail and turned herself in. She was arrested and charged with murder. This case started a whole grassroots movement to raise awareness of domestic abuse and create a safe place for women who are being abused. Next, the activists targeted the legal system. I know those individuals weren't celebrities, but it still involved domestic violence and why it changed how, like I said, they used to see it as a joke and it was a private matter and, you know, they didn't want to get involved. After that case, the, the men got right real quick. We're like, ooh, we don't, we don't want our women. You know, they got right. See, that's when, when things change. That's because some people get scared. Let's continue. Hollywood exasperates the culture of domestic violence, don't you think? Look at how they depict domestic violence in movies. Women regularly abused, misused, treated as disposable objects. Even children aren't, exclu aren't excluded from this caveman horrific narrative. Women, children, and elderly are most of the time, if not always, depicted in some very unsavory way. While men are seen as unstoppable, you gotta wonder why. 
apparently that's how men are seen in this country unstoppable able to do as they feel without consequences women you are more stronger than you think Stop playing like foolish welcome mats. It would be better if you stayed broke and poor than to pimp yourself out to some man because he got a little something. And then he used you as a dumpster, putting whatever he want inside you and on you. I would like to include some blind items I found some time ago. Listen to this and think about who you think it is or ponder about it. This person is best was best friends with an overseas madman who beats women for sport and unconfirmed rumors allege that his violence is so intense that two women have died. Allegedly, he considered them peasants with no family. Several of his victims have been black women who received a payoff not to go to the police. A now defunct magazine told story after story about him being a coward, a bully, a liar, a fake, and an idiot. When he hosted a late night comedy show, he suggested a skit featuring a woman who gets brutally violated but was rebuffed. Allegedly, he was blacklisted by an NYC escort service due to choking girls and abusing them. The black and brown escorts receive the worst of the abuse. That's the end of the blind item. I have no clue who it is. I give so many people come to my mind, but hey. The next person is Justin Rowland. Roiland. He's the co-creator of Rick and Morty. <laughs> and I've heard some uh, people quoting some things from Rick and Morty, and I can really, I, I see the mind of the person who created this um animation justin was accused of domestic violence in 2020 but the story wasn't reported in the news until 2023 of, of this year january of this year after allegations were made public it also came to light that he had a history of grooming young girls for sexual encounters but he got a show Next person is rapper Earl Hayes and Stephanie Mosley. Actor and dancer Stephanie Mosley, who was known for cheerleading comedy Hell's Cats and VH1 dance drama Hit the Floor, was shot by her husband, rapper Earl Hayes, on December the 8th, 2014. As the rap reported, LAPD and SWAT team were called to a building after gunshots were heard, the couple was found deceased inside. Michael Jace and April Jace. Michael played a police officer on FX series The Shield. He ended up murdering his wife, April, in 2014 after 10 years together. Police told the Los Angeles Times that they were called out to the couple's Hyde Park home after neighbors heard gunshots and that the actor quickly confessed to murdering his wife according to abc april's mother testified that her son-in-law texted her right after the murder on may 19th bluntly telling her come to the house i shot april the court was also told that the couple's sons were present at the scene of the crime and that michael had taunted april by shooting her in the legs michael was ultimately sentenced to 40 years in prison Let's talk about Ray Rice. What happened in 2014, him punching his wife out. The incident took place February 15th at the Revel Hotel and Casino in Atlantic City after Ray and his fiancee, now wife, Janae Palmer, got into a heated argument on their way into the elevator. Inside the elevator, it's apparent he strikes first. She hits back and then Race delivers the knockout blow. The punch knocks Jay Janae off her feet and she smashes her head on the elevator handrail, knocking her out cold. Ray doesn't seem phased, and when the door opens, he drags her out into the hotel. Let's talk about Sean Penn. In 1987, Sean Penn infamously tortured then wife Madonna for nine hours. He tied her to a chair, threatened to cut off her hair, forced her to perform degrading sexual acts, and beat her with a baseball bat. 
Since then, the 55-year-old and director has gone on to star in dozens of critically acclaimed movies, won two Academy Awards, and became a champion of numerous political and social causes. His violent past is shocking, but hardly talked about. Sean Penn also served 33 days in prison for an incident in which he punched a photographer. photographer. Let's go to Dr. Dre. After Straight Outta Compton, Dr. Dre, for the first time in over 20 years, was forced to address his violence against women, including beating music journalist D. Borns in 1992 and allegedly physically abusing fiance Michelle during their six-year relationship. Dre made a statement a statement in Rolling Stone, then later a formal public apology that was supported in another statement by Apple. Did you know domestic violence was has been visible throughout the history? In early Roman society, a woman was deemed the property of the husband and was therefore subject to his control. According to early Roman law, a man could beat, divorce, or murder his wife for offenses committed by her, which besmirch his honor or threaten his property rights. These were considered private, private matters and were not publicly scrutinized. How lowly they think of women. One more last, the more you know. Let's talk about the rule of thumb. Do you know where it derived from? The Catholic Church's endorsement of the rules of marriage in the 15th century extorted, exhorted the husband to stand as judge of his wife. He was to beat her with a stick upon her commission of an offense. According to the rules, beating showed a concern for the wife's soul. The common law in England gave a man the right to beat his wife in the interest of maintaining family discipline. The phrase rule of thumb referred to the English common law, which allowed a husband to beat his wife as long as he used a stick that was no bigger than a thumb. In early America, English law greatly affected the decisions of the colonial courts. The Puritans openly banned family violence. The laws, however, lacked strict enforcement. It was not until the 1870s that the first states banned a man's right to beat his family. The laws were moderately enforced until the feminist movement of the 1960s started bringing the problems of domestic violence or domestic abuse to the intention of the media. By the 1980s, most states had adopted legislation regarding domestic violence. And that is so sick that there's a culture in this country that is an underlying culture still in this country that makes it okay for men to abuse their wives. Why do you think it still continues? There was an incident that I experienced when I was working in the early 90s. I'm not going to say the name of the hospital, but I was working, I was working in the cafeteria of this um, premier medical facility in Los Angeles. There was a male supervisor who harassed damn near every woman who worked with him and worked outside the cafeteria. I'd be scheduled to work with this guy on the weekends, and the weekends was very slow. Not many departments in the hospital was open. So it was like me and a handful of other co-workers in the cafeteria on schedule. On the slow days, when the big head honchos of the hospital and the cafeteria weren't around, that's when the guy did his damage. The guy I'm referring to, he was the supervisor as well. When I'd be alone working in an area by myself, he slipped behind me from out of nowhere and whispered sexual things in my ear. He one time told me, I guess he thought I was supposed to be excited about it or something. I felt like it was a compliment. I don't know. Flattered. But he told me that he pleasured himself as he thought about my lips. You know, ish, he would say ish like that. I was very uncomfortable to the point that I really feared ending up being alone around this fool. He came off like a sex perv, like... All he did was touch himself all day, 
when he was alone or find an ability to sneak off while he was at work and do whatever he wanted to do. I dreaded going into our supply room by myself when he was around. I mean, for real. Picture a movie where a woman is somewhere, but everywhere she is, she's always looking up show her shoulders just anxiety and you know just just uncomfortable nervous you know she's jumping in her skin that's how i started feeling at that job that kind of anxiety it just worked me it was really it was really beginning to affect me what he was doing how he was coming at me i finally one day i had enough of it and i told my sister she was a supervisor there as well but she didn't work you know, during the time I worked on the weekend, she didn't work with me. Turns out when I told her, she said he was harassing her too. Finally, all the women got together that worked in the cafeteria and around the hospital. We all got together and filed a complaint against him. We even filed complaints with the EEOC. It was a big deal. This Negro had no sense or chill. He ain't had no sense at all. He went after whoever he felt he had a right to. I believe he even sexually harassed the women administrators of the hospital. The women that had the big positions, titles up there. Black, white, it didn't matter. He, didn't, he did not discriminate. Straight male dog in heat. I've never met any man like him since, thank God. I don't know what happened to him. I know he got fired. But I don't know what else happened to him. And it was we was all relieved when he, you know, wasn't there anymore. But I know how it feels to be here. And that's not the only time I it was it, I have never experienced anything that worse, but I've experienced things similar to that. And I, I'm I don't understand what it what it takes for these men, for some men to realize that that's not attractive to us. It's unwanted. It's, it's not a compliment. I mean, I know you have some women out there that like it. They bathe in it. They bask in it. And they don't see nothing wrong. But all women don't feel that way. And then it's the women that accept that kind of treatment. Being treated like you're nothing but an object. A horror object to these men. It's like you allow them, the, them to treat you so disrespectfully. And then when they get around a woman... Who will not tolerate that? Then she come. She becomes all kind of bitches and and whores and everything because he can't treat her like he tra just treated the last five, ten women. I mean, you make it hard for a lot of women, but you ain't gonna make it hard for me. Cause I'm trying to tell you, man, all women aren't the same. I don't know what happened to you. I don't know what woman did whatever to you, but all women aren't the same, and all women ain't gonna stand for it. You gonna mess with the right woman. And then that's just going to be it. So that's about all I'm going to say. It's self-explanatory. This, this whole, it's, it's like you, women, you have to stop subjecting yourself to this. You have to stop remaining in rela abusive, violent relationships like this, especially when you have daughters and sons. Because you're indirectly teaching your son it's okay to treat women like this. And then you're teaching your daughter that it's okay to be treated like this. The cycle has to end. It has to stop. I remember I read this book years ago. I read the book. I was so irked by that book. I, I talked to the author briefly. I think she still might be. No. I think she was on my Facebook page for a while. We was on Facebook. And I would speak to her periodically. But... Yeah, I told her, man, I was so, I told her and her agent, I was so disturbed by that book. It was like four generations of women who put up with domestic violence and every generation it was just worse and worse. To the point that I think the last two are the fourth generation, she almost got killed by her psycho husband. You have to stop, women. Stop allowing yourself to be treated like that. If the men are not going to stop, you need to stop putting up with it. And I don't mean to be going on no man-hating spree. Because not all men are psycho like that. There really aren't. You just got to learn how to pick better men and stop being desperate. And you can get mad if you want to. The truth hurts. Some of you women are in desperate and you just take this and you didn't see the signs. This Negro, and I'm being in, I'm saying that word in general, because then you could be white and be a Negress. And a Negress 
You could be Hispanic, you be Asian, you get mad if you want you to. You don't want to be called a nigger, you stop calling black people niggers. Because niggers supposed to stand for somebody that's what? Ignorant. And you don't have to be black to be ignorant. You see the signs. These men show you who they are and what they're about. And you still get with them. Oh, she tripping. She gonna say a billionaire is a little change. That's why you in the situation y'all in, y'all worshiping these people with money. And some of them are, are terrible individuals. You value money more than you value your peace of mind and your health and your body. What happened in your life to, to see yourself so small that you value a dollar sign over your body? I've literally been in situations where I was in dire straits for real. And people came and offered me a solution. To do some illegal activities that were supposedly untraceable to give me a whole lot of money. And I didn't want to do Because I it. didn't want to out of conscious. And I know in the way I serve God and know that he is, exists, I know this as sure as I'm breathing, that he watches everything I do. So I had a conscious, a God conscious. Still have a God conscious. So it comes a time in life where you're going to have to Start putting your integrity over a dollar sign. That's why so much corruption is in the land. People put dollar signs over their own children. Thank you. I'm about to wrap this up. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for all that. Thank you so much. Be safe. And I'll see you in the next video.